Welcome. My name is Steve Holland, and I'm with Rapid Tech. It's one of the brands owned by Ethos Skill LLC. And uh, this is the heat exchanger series. The course idea in this is the train t model TUC. And we are going to look at a train heat exchanger or train furnace and talk about some of the failures. Now, I'll make it real clear. Uh, we're not, uh, one thing I want to make clear here is we, we, we don't know the unknowns. So I'm also very, very careful with regard to um, talking negatively or, or throwing a, a manufacturer under the bus. In this case, uh, when we look at this video, you'll see where the failures are. Um, this is not necessarily a train problem. I think this is an installation problem. And oftentimes, I've been doing this 27 years, and oftentimes I notice problems with furnaces um, have very little to do with the manufacturer. Matter of fact, most of the time it's the installation, poor installation or lack of maintenance. Um, that's oftentimes what I see, and I see it um, daily, believe it or not. So let's just talk about the unknowns real quick. Um, we don't know if this furnace was installed in unconditioned space. We don't know if it was installed around corrosive materials where maybe the intake pipe was never installed and it was just using uh, intake air from the basement or the or the space, and there was corrosive, you know, who knows? I mean, you, people store all kinds of things around their furnaces and water heaters. Uh, we don't know if this furnace had a recirculation of exhaust where the exhaust was being dropped back, drawn back into the intake. Uh, matter of fact, I do believe that was the case, but I can't prove it, but looking and doing an examination. And by the way, every one of these furnaces, we not only video... The findings, we literally take them apart piece by piece and we examine the chamber or the heat exchanger to see what the failure looks like. So we physically handle it, we visually look at it with our eyes, we video it, and we, f and we take pictures of it. And all these things are out on our Rapid Tech site. Uh, it's the, uh, the training system and certification through Rapid Tech. And by the way, Rapid Tech is a national certification program. So if you'd like to get your technician certified, heat exchanger certified, this is uh, what I believe, you know, granted I own the company, so I'm biased, but I really believe this is the best certification out there. Um, back to the unknowns. We don't know if it was installed in a cold environment and if they had a low fan off delay. So when the fan shuts off, how long was that delay running? Was it cooling down the heat exchanger or were we condensing inside that chamber? Second thing is, uh, or the last thing, I shouldn't say second, but the last thing is the incorrect thermostat cycling rate. Years ago, we used to have a heat anticipator. Um, today we have cycling rates, and uh, there's different cycling rates for different types of furnaces and manufacturers. Uh, these are the unknowns. I have no idea uh, how it was installed. But what we do know is there are failures, and I'm going to show you those failures. And the reason uh, we show these videos and we train technicians um, is so that if they find this, um, so that they should, first of all, they should be examining furnaces for these problems. Um, secondly, if they find the problem, they need to know uh, where to look. You know, they need to just look look at the things that I just mentioned there because we may not have a manufacturer's problem here. And, and in this case, I don't think we do. So uh, one of the challenges, I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's say this furnace was removed, which it was, and it was replaced with a new furnace. If the installing technicians... Let's just say they connected it back up to the venting that was there. They checked the venting and it had the right number of elbows. It was the correct size, the correct length and size. But they never checked the termination. Maybe the termination was up on the roof of the building, going out the roof. Well, guess what? If it's recirculating or recirculating the exhaust, we could ruin another brand new furnace. So that's why we show these videos so technicians can be good technicians. And remember, at Rapid Tech and EthoSkill, our goal is to change the industry one technician at a time. And uh, for you owners out there, you can't go wrong when you have uh, well-educated or well-informed technicians. So I see these mistakes all the time. Let's take a look at the video so you guys can see what's going on here. All right, let's take a look at the train TUC. This is a 60,000. And I want to show you exactly where to locate on this particular model, um, where you'll find failures with this particular heat exchanger. Um, I've got two different train models here. I'll do this one first. Model TUC 060. Um, all of these furnaces have the same heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger is the same. The only difference will be the number of cells. So if you find an 80,000, 100,000, um, it won't matter just as long as you know where to look. Furnace. Another 
train that there's another train right there that we'll go over in a minute, but here's this one. As you can see, there's a hole right through the side of the chamber. Um, so what you want to do is you want to look for that. I'll talk about that in a little bit, why I think that happened. These are the rings. It's a metal extrusion ring. And occasionally you've got to watch for a little fracture inside those. Um, if these fracture, what will happen is it will suck air through the chamber and then you'll overheat other parts of the, uh, other parts of the chamber. Remember, condensing gas furnaces, the primary is under negative pressure. So any breaches or holes in this chamber after the firebox, you're now drawing air in where it shouldn't be, thus allowing uh, either flame impingement or you're going to overheat other parts of the chamber. There's another ring. Most of these rings look pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and take a look down here. Completely routed through. You can stick your finger through that one. There's another hole right there. Every one of these chambers has holes in it. Let's see if I can get this. Another one. Check those rings. Looks like there might be, it's hard to tell, there could be a small fracture in that ring. So, that's the model TUC. So the things that you want to look for, you want to look for these holes, you want to look for, um, again, the rings, check your firing rate, check your combustion analysis, figure out why these, uh, these models are doing this. Um, I'll talk about that, those uh, where it's rotting out, that's actually, um, I believe that's happening because condensation's getting in there. So I believe we're getting con uh, condensation, we're condensing in the primary. And if we condense in the primary, it will rot through. This is just an aluminized coated heat exchanger, and it will be a problem. So there you go. There's a model TUC by train. All right. So sorry about the audio. It's just the way it is. I have a camera system that I use, uses its own audio, and then I have to use my mic here to record that audio. Um, so let's just recap really quick. Uh, number one, we don't believe, I don't believe, a 27-year veteran of this industry, I don't believe that's a train problem. I believe there was an installation issue there. So I say that because some of these manufacturers take, they take the brunt of the, uh, the negativity and they, they really deal with, you know, bad reviews. It, you know, I've had customers say, I'll never buy a Model XYZ or a brand XYZ. And here you look at the installation and it was horrible. So at Rapid Tech, uh, we teach... Uh, a number of things. One, we teach quality. Quality installations. Technicians um, should be performing quality installations. Number two, service technicians should be performing quality PTUs or, or maintenance. You know, using a combustion analyzer on every furnace. Checking the venting, the intake and exhaust on every furnace. Checking to make sure there's no corrosive material. Check, checking those fan cycling rates on maintenance calls. You can eliminate so many problems for customers. Checking static duct pressures, airflow, temperature rise on the heat exchanger, your delta T's, gas pressure, um, all of those things should be checked. And I believe that if we check those things as technicians and as an industry, um, number one, we'll, we'll get uh, a much better life expectancy out of some of the equipment today, but we'll also give customers um, the efficiency they're looking for and uh, the comfort that they're looking for. So again, I'm very careful and I don't want to throw a train under the bus because again, I don't think this is a train problem. I believe this was an installation issue or, or a venting problem where it was recirculating. And again, we don't know either if an installation company did that. Sometimes homeowners will add a deck to their home and they'll change the venting or the siding guy will come in and he'll install new siding. I've seen it all. I've seen everything that you can possibly imagine. So we have to be careful uh, when, we, when we talk about other contractors and when we talk about manufacturers. However, with that said, 
the goal of this video is not this, the goal of this video is, is simply this to teach technicians the proper way of inspecting these things and what to look for and also when a technician finds an issue what to do about it where to look next you know technicians have to be detectives and uh, you know that's that's what makes uh, the HVAC industry a little bit of fun because there are no guarantees there's no manual that you can read that says oh this is what's going on so with that said this is another rapid tech module um, a rapid tech training course there are literally dozens of these um, just on furnaces and then there's hundreds on, on all the other things so if you want your rapid tech certification and you want to get your technician certified rapid tech um, we're available to do that for you so again my name is Steve Holland I hope you enjoyed this video thank you